Welcome to Shoot the Breeze, a series on a podcast that celebrates the messiness of life, relationships, and Christianity, featuring my wife Lacey and myself, Nathan. It's creatively titled because it will be just us shooting the breeze, uh, sometimes with guests, while occasionally saying something important. We hope you enjoy. I'm you Nathan. are Nathan. I am. I am Lacey. You are. We are married. We just celebrated our 16th year. Is that we correct? We did our 16th anniversary, and we celebrated by going to the beach and celebrating our daughter's adoption day. So it wasn't. We we're all there as a family. So I don't know how what kind of anniversary celebration was, that was. But yeah, no, there was nothing romantic about it. <laughs> anniversary our dinner we went out to Ari ended up getting poisoned by dairy and so she spent part of the night throwing up in the bathroom well then the following week you had on our anniversary gotten poisoned by gluten so you spent the week in a migraine state for the entire week <sighs> that in was bed. fun let's not talk about that week so that was a bad week i have a question for you yes why a podcast we have been doing other things videos and all of the like why a podcast because you said, hey, Lacey, let's do a podcast. Yep. So also, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a little bit more than that. So we oh, have different it? avenues. We've, Tell me what you want done... me to say. No, Apparently, I, I did not say what you wanted me to say. I actually, here's the thing. I didn't have an answer, and I was hoping you'd come up with something more creative than I would. All I have is we've done coaching videos, and we both, well, at least I felt in praying about them, like we're done with coaching videos. We've done teachings we've done all these okay. forms and it was like i honestly feel like god said hey uh you're done i mean not that we don't publish those and it's available to people but essentially in creating them i feel like we're done and so a podcast you and i to be fair we mutually agreed on this this was not something i said we should do <laughs> no, i'm giving you a hard time yeah no, we came together and i you actually said i've been praying about what we should do next and i said how about a podcast and um because both him and i have been into different people doing podcasts and they will focus on the podcast but also have video content available and i had pitched that idea which mm -hmm. is not a new idea I, I know we're a little late to the party but he said yes <laughs> that that's exactly what i've been thinking of and i I think the reason I really like it is because I'm a big podcast person because I tend to like to uh, to my daughters. She hates it so much, but I prefer talk radio or podcast when I'm driving and she wants any kind, anything else. But that's what I prefer. I prefer it even when I'm working out or when I'm cleaning. That's what that's what I want to be listening to. And so I'm like, what if we did something like that? I think it would open up to a different audience as well. Right. Um, and then we still have our uh, Cultivate teachings that we're posting, our new videos that we're doing under mon on Mondays. So this would be a um, Hey, remember when I told you to turn your sound you off? You did, and I thought I did. It's called the this vibrate mode, and you put it on vibrate, and so it won't ding when someone texts you while okay, we're wait. recording okay, wait, wait, a wait. podcast. So this is what happened. Oh, gosh. Uh, so It won't do it. My phone case won't let me. So... <laughs> <laughs> are you kidding me? Really love. My phone case won't let me at it. Are okay, okay, we're okay now. Listen. Okay, so this is what happened. Hold on. Pause. Stop. <laughs> so what <laughs> my I have a life proof on because I drop my phone all the time. I drop it in goo, I drop it in water, I drop it in things. So I have to have a, a case, a heavy case. But the case won't let me use the button to turn it off, so I gotta do all these like special spells to get it to the section where I can turn on vibrate. Well then on top of that, Ari's always getting on my phone, my daughter, my nine year old. So I had to put a code on it now. So it has to identify my face. So it wasn't identifying my, I was trying, it's on silent now. <laughs> Are you sure? Cause I feel like you told me that once already. <laughs> okay. Listen, I had put it on airplane mode. Actually at first I was being so good. And then you took forever to get everything set up. Okay. And I was like, well, let's not talk uh, about, free. I was so bored. And so then I got back on my phone again and I wasn't getting any texts from anybody. So I turned it back on and we have to make a deal. Yes. What happened pre podcast <laughs> stays pre podcast. You don't bring pre podcast okay. into. I won't. I promise. But whatever happens on the podcast is fair game. Therefore you should turn your phone off. It's off. I promise debatable okay so number why one a podcast order no, business no why a podcast we already said all that we did okay that's I right. said everything that i needed to say about that so here's the thing it's our first yes i would call this a legit podcast even though we have a bunch of other 
things available on our podcast stream, like teachings, coaching. We've already addressed all this. We did. You're Here's, just looping. You know that, right? No, I'm. it's called repetitive <laughs> oh. um, advertising. Oh, it's like so. Is that what you do in normal conversation with me? Rep- I repetitively advertise. <laughs> you don't. It's not looping. You're just repetitively trying to make a point. Exactly. Cool. It's, it's what a know. good teacher does. That's great. They repeat their point. They tell you their point. Okay. They emphasize their That's point, good. and then they conclude with it's their good point. Good to know, Professor. Keep going. <laughs> so it's our first podcast, okay. and I wanted to do a couple firsts. And see if we can see how good our memory is, okay? All right. So the first one that I have is, what was your the, our your first thought of me when you first saw me? Oh, my gosh. Okay, so let me paint this picture to you because I, I wish I actually had the picture to, like, give to the video people because... The video people, like me? <laughs> like, I'm the video person. <laughs> yeah, like, put on the video. Yeah, we don't have, like, editors and producers. <laughs> no, 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 I meant so the people watching the video could see it. Oh, yeah. But we, okay, I think Nathan was 20, no, I was 20, he was 18, and I mean, I don't, I, I will say he was like, when you see a punk kid and you think to yourself, that's a punk kid, that's what I thought even though I was only 20, I was like, that's a punk kid. And we met in the basement of the Bible school we went to at Alaska Bible Institute in Homer, Alaska. And it was just a small little area. And I look over at him and it, the, there was not that many students that year. And I realized I've not met this person. So being a an adult, I thought, hey, I should say hi. So I walk over and I said, hi, I'm Lacey. And I stuck out my hand. This is pre-COVID days. So, you know, handshakes were acceptable. And um, he looked at me and he looked at my hand and he said nothing really. And so I kind of asserted myself like, hello. And by this time, I like punk kid was really like solidified like yeah that's who you were now added to the judgment was no social skills inability to communicate and you're probably not going to hang out with this guy but i'm going to push us through push through out of social nicety right so eventually you like told me your name and um he had at the time he had several piercings he had a lip piercing he had a ear piercings and um just not a lot of self-respect i guess because (laughs) no here's the thing hold on so first of all yes i did not have social skills no um Hmm. that would endear me to other people right i also have what what i would i can't use the word because we want to make this kid friendly agreed i have a certain resting face that really dissuades people from wanting to talk to me to approach you yeah yeah we always talk about how nate the first impression with nathan no matter who it is is always bad yep and that did that did hold water with my first impression of him as well yeah but once you get to know me i am just a big teddy bear so much fun to be with right i mean my face doesn't change though yeah it (laughs) i mean it took a few years for him to convince me to go out with him but eventually i did (laughs) so i guess you did win i did win that's the thing is i won um so part of this is i i also lacked a lot of self-respect as my wife said correct and i did not have social so i didn't have social skills communication skills i had a resting a certain resting face correct that and then also um you know i just i i would easily become overwhelmed and I read. I do, honestly don't remember uh, our first encounter. Um, <laughs> obviously, you didn't make. I was an that impression. overwhelming. It, under, just, underwhelming. No, I was that <laughs> overwhelming. Your mind reset. You couldn't handle all the. Which may not be <laughs> wrong. I think that. I mean, that may not be wrong. Is because there's a lot of there's a. I don't remember a lot of things. Um, you do, you actually don't remember meeting me. No. Of that at all. <laughs> Nope. When's the first time you remember me popping in your memory? Was it like know, our wedding or what is it like pre that he, first year of marriage? Like at what wanna, point do I become memorable? Do you seriously want to know? Yeah, I seriously want to know. It was the dinner that the guys threw for the. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I don't remember a whole lot before that. I remember like, like of your life or of me. Yep. I don't remember. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I don't remember. I, I like I remember us hanging out in groups where we'd play cards. We would do stuff like that. 
but honestly, my big first memory was, I, yeah, my big first memory was, um, uh, yeah, when we would, when we had that dinner, the guys threw, at our Bible school, the guys threw a dinner for the girls, and essentially, you know, we played it off like, you know, we're brothers in Christ, and we're gonna have we wanted to make you guys dinner. Nobody really believed that, though. No, 100% not. It was basically They were trying to set themselves up. Yeah. Um, and but, this is so funny because this was into our second year, and he had already been pursuing me, but he doesn't, per- he doesn't remember wait, me, wait, apparently. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I, don't, I just remember we would be hanging out randomly with other people whether that was weird, first or second year. weird okay well what, yeah. what else you got for Here's first? Th- wait 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 there's a there's a lot of things in our first year of bible school yeah that i i feel like i black blanked out because it was it was traumatic there's a lot of things that the happened bible first school year. was traumatic or you yourself were tra- traumatized yes um cool both are accurate <laughs> uh no we just had it was just kind of a crazy first year it was just like it was without giving details it was a crazy you're not you're not lying there thank you so i just chose to not remember it thank you so much for listening to our podcast this is one of the many resources we make available for free at our website cultivaterelationships.com our resources have helped people grow in their relationship with god and others Uh, we've seen people set free from uncontrollable anger and paralyzing fear We've witnessed estranged family members be reunited after working through our freedom booklet. We've helped people build healthy relationship and coping habits through our coaching videos. And all of these resources are made available for free because of the generous support of people like you. If you would like to become a partner, please visit cultivaterelationships.com slash support. Now, I hope you enjoy the rest of this episode. Okay, ready? Ready? Yeah, we're yeah. gonna Next jump. One. We're gonna jump ahead. You said first, a list of first things. Yeah, first oh, date. Oh, okay. First date. My first date with you. Um. Yeah, we're talking about <laughs> oh. our relationship. I wasn't sure if you said first date or. <laughs> okay, my first date with you. Um. Here's the thing. It shouldn't be hard to remember because Lacey has literally had two first dates. Oh shit! <laughs> You're so mean. You're such a mean person. No, that's like notable that's something that's like a praiseworthy thing uh-huh i feel it's like, you're like mo- why do i feel like you're mocking though no mocking whatsoever <laughs> sure. no you're not like a hussy so it's like literally oh, like people that have had more than two dates are a hussy that's a really long like that's that's like either I'm so, here's the i thing. feel like you need to clarify that i just i don't lost I'm throwing about 75 percent of our listeners right there no i'm throwing oh, right, but, but the homeschool girls <laughs> in denim are like yeah tell them <laughs> No, I'm literally throwing myself oh, under the gosh. bus as well. I, even though I wouldn't, like, I don't know what the guy version oh, okay, of bus is. Oh, okay, first date, first date. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. connect me. It was terrible. Our first date was terrible. It was horrible. Shoot, I, you know what's funny is I forgot about our first date. <laughs> Until you just brought it up right <laughs> Until now. Until I just brought it up and I realized how embarrassing it is for yeah, me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay, so I got to tell it now. Um, oh, no. So, to make a long story even longer and tedious... Um, Nathan had been pursuing me for a long time and eventually he wore me down enough and I thought, yeah, let's do this thing. So we ended up. No, no, no. Hold on. She, I'm, no, no, no. She not literally it had out. to. No, she had to have teachers around her say, hey, I think Nathan is OK now. <sighs> yeah, eventually. Right. So he decides we were at a different state at this time. We were in the Midwest and um, we had been working with this ministry group and um so we had just gotten done with a season of, of um, work with them. And so Nathan said, you know, this would be a perfect time before I go back to my home state for us to spend some time together and let's do this date. And so he planned out this really awesome date that we were going to go on. Well, meanwhile, one of his friends said, hey, I actually want to do a double date with <coughs> my girlfriend and myself. And so let's do that. But the only time that they could decide would work would be prior to the nice day he planned out so because nathan was really had trouble saying no at that point in his life which is people that know him now are gonna just think that's hilarious but he had a lot of trouble saying no as kind of a people pleaser and so he said yes so this guy that we are friends with and his girlfriend actually they were broke and i mean it's not like we were rolling but nathan 
basically had planned something a little nicer to do for his first date, first impression with me. But this guy said, let's meet at Taco Bell and then we'll go to the movies and see iRobot. And for me, that just wasn't that was not impressive. And it was so awkward because we kind of felt like we were getting made fun of a little bit because it well, was like, like an awkward first date anyway. Well, and they had already been dating for, for a while. months. Yeah. yeah. And so you and I were a bit awkward because it well, was our yeah, first date. Yeah, exactly. Right. And meanwhile, so we show up at Taco Bell and <laughs> Uh, we order. I think the bill is like, I don't know, $3.95. <laughs> and it's Taco Bell. Yeah. So they ask for the money and I look at Nathan and Nathan like frantically starts looking through his wallet. And I was, I was just thinking, wow. Okay, here we go. And, um, you managed, I think you managed to find some money. I think, yeah, it was like a debit. I ended up finding my debit card or something <laughs> like that. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, it was not going well. And then we went to iRobot. And I think I remember it's like a PG-13. We got carded. Yeah, so at that point. here's the thing. At this point, we are <laughs> like 19 and 21 or something like that. And we get carded at a PG-13 movie. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Yeah. But um, and then I really don't need to. Um, if you've ever seen iRobot, I don't need to go into the rest of the disappointment of that evening. But oh, I um, like I love the movie no yeah we actually own it now it's a great movie okay um <laughs> next next first first kiss do you remember it i do remember our first kiss that was really sweet actually <gasps> oh i do too you did well okay guys let me paint this picture we're in alaska we are and i i told her i do not want to kiss until we're married mm -hmm. like i want our marriage to be our first kiss because I knew my past and I knew, you know what, if I started going down that road, it's not going to work out well for this relationship. So I said, listen, first kiss is going to be on our wedding day. To which Lacey vehemently. I said, no, that's not happening. I'm not, wa I'm not having all of my family members and friends watch me have. It would be my first kiss. So, no, that's weird to me. That belongs to me alone. Wait, and wait, 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 wait. I think that's super awkward. Hold on, I want to clarify something. This was not your first kiss. This was my first kiss. No. You had a boy. I had a boy? Didn't you have a boy? No, I, you? no. No. No, I never had a first kiss. You were my I first kiss. Got a, I thought he like. Oh, on my cheek? That doesn't count. Hmm, it's a kiss. Oh my gosh. Anyways, so I, so I'm like, fine. Proposal. That are, when I propose to you, that'll be the first kiss. She wore me down. And so, um... Yeah, okay, because, listen, I was already homeschooled, okay? Already, Nathan was my first serious boyfriend, and I did not want my first kiss to be at the altar. I, that just wasn't my idea of what I... No. So... I, I stand... I, I still am steady on that. Fine. So, <laughs> I... So, we're in Alaska. We're at, in Homer, and there... It's a... How Homer is, is it, it's kind of up on a hill, but it overlooks a bay and then mountains across the bay. It beautiful, so beautiful. And so I took her out to dinner, and we go up, and I found this bluff that, that was just magnificent. And so we go there, and I I can't remember, did I forget to get down on one knee? You did. You did forget to, you did. Yeah. You were really nervous. I was and so nervous. You... It was the first person I've proposed to. Oh, good. That's. I'm glad. No, that's what makes it nervous. Like, firsts for me are really nerve-wracking. <laughs> but he had also bought me this really pretty, this cute skirt that I liked at this boutique. And mm -hmm. so he hands me a big box. Mm -hmm. And I open it up, and there's a skirt. And on a ribbon on the skirt was the engagement ring. Mm -hmm. And then he kissed me. I did. The kiss was, I mean, it was sweet and kind, but we were we were needing we got to better. get our sea legs. <laughs> we got better after that. Um so, okay, that was our first kiss. Yes. Um, I don't know if I, if you have any more firsts. Those are the only ones I have written down. I mean... I mean we've had a lot of firsts, but... It's true. I can't think of any that were... As, that you, uh, to add to the list right now. Yeah. Okay. Can you... Uh, is there anything that you not, can think of? I mean, not coming to my mind yeah. currently, no. Or appropriate for this audience. I, 
Okay. Well, what's the next segment? All right. Next thing is, oh, so we have this segment. Lacey and I, as we're planning out episodes, we have several segments that we want to incorporate into various mm-hmm. episodes. So one of the segments is called Whistleblower. And what Whistleblower is, um, I'm reading it here, is telling, basically telling on the other person. It's where one of us, is it called, it blows the whistle? Whistle blow. Whistle blows. <laughs> Tell me what you think a whistleblower is. I'd like they to like, know. They, they like reveal things. Right. Exactly. You just seem confused for a second. I was no. unsure if we were on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> no, whistleblower. So Lacey's going to kick us off, which I'm, I do a lot of. Okay. So lot we've agreed that we are going to like think of these things and then not tell the other person until we are recording what they are. And so <laughs> I, I'm very nervous. I am going to be blowing the whistle on Nathaniel. I think that this is terrible and he needs to be called out. Um, He has his Amber Alerts turned off on his phone. So one morning I am just woken up by the alarm and I roll over see it's the amber alert you know you kind of just think about that yeah that's that's important they should get the news out and i noticed he doesn't have he asked me why my alarm was set that to that time and i said well that was an amber alert don't you have that and he said no i turned mine off which i feel is judgment worthy right there that he doesn't care (laughs) that people are being driven away in cars on highways and so um, I didn't have a whistleblower. Uh, you didn't have a whistleblower? No, not for you, because you're just going to do it. Oh, oh, I thought both of us were supposed to share no, one. No, no, no. I have one coming up in a couple episodes. But oh, okay. since we're on the Amber Alert Yes. Um, <laughs> but subject, I just feel like we need to stick on the point that you don't feel like it's important enough to, yeah. you know, have that two seconds where you look at your phone mm. and know, hey. Yeah. Yeah, there's someone being kidnapped. Nope. So... <laughs> Um, correct. I don't have it turned on. In fact, I have pretty much all my alerts turned off. Um, and you so know, what if there's like a terrible like <coughs> storm or something? Would you just not be notified? Probably not. Okay. I mean, as I hear other people's alerts going off, I could look at my phone. Are you around other people a lot during the day? All day you, long? I know your notifications <laughs> are on. So can I tell you, you know what? You're right. Um, can I tell you why I turned my Amber alerts off? Why? So um, one night at Cultivate, we run a local ministry um, here, and um, at Cultivate, my wife was <laughs> my wife was teaching, and an Amber Alert goes off. So everyone's phone is going off, and she proceeds to start giggling and laughing, and goes, "Man, we never had Amber Alerts in Alaska. This is weird." And she's laughing because at there's Amber only Alerts. one row. There's like one road in Alaska. They're not going to send out an Amber Alert in one road. Like they just called Jerry up the road and are like, can you look out for this Bronco? And he's like, okay, yeah. And they cut it off. But Bronco. Isn't that funny how my mind immediately chose Bronco as the vehicle to look out for? <laughs> but you No, Here's what's funny is you laughed at an I Amber didn't, Alert. No, no, I was not laughing at the Amber Alert. I was laughing at the one road. Okay, here's what happened. Amber Alert goes off. She starts laughing and proceeds to tell the story. And then she goes, and I quote, oh, we should probably pray for them. Okay, so I feel like I I feel like the lead got buried here. Nathan turns off his Amber Alerts. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, that was a quick one. Best and worst gifts. Okay, you want to go first? Like um, yeah. your your best gift for me, or your? Oh, is it just for each other? Yeah, yeah, not in not in like global, like best uh, from me, worst from me. Cause no, uh, shoot, I had a different one planned. I had a different one that I thought of. Okay, well, I'll do mine first okay, for you. So my best gift from Nathan was actually my worst gift from Nathan at the same time. What? Yeah, yeah. It's really you're really talented. How you managed to? I am talented. Pull off that kind of a thing. What was it? <laughs> so, 
It was on our first year of marriage, and he was still in school, and I was working, and um, he put a lot of time and energy into, I want to say it was my birthday, and um, I, I mean, he spent days working on this project, and I thought he was a little crazy. Like, I didn't, he used to get kind of obsessive with things, and um, like, he had taken paper and like, put tea bags and water and he he turned the paper a different oh, that's color right. oh, and then he word. put it in the oven and he like crisped it up to look old and then he like had like a, a quill it was really over the top hold on, but hold on so during this time uh <laughs> dan brown came out with the um the da vinci, da vinci code, code. Yeah. so there's like clues and we were really into the book and so what i wanted to do was like do a scavenger hunt for her and yeah, so I yeah. had, yeah. But at the same time, I thought you were crazy because you were doing like these weird arts and crafts. Yeah. No, I wanted to make it like. Yeah. So you were you were smart. So I wanted to make this like difficult and like, OK, she right. has to put some time. So the day this. of my birthday comes and he's just been working on this forever. And it was these clues. And so I get home from work and I find my first clue on the door. Well, um. I kid you not, the man had way more confidence in me than I had brains because <laughs> I, after about three hours, I think I had only gotten about four clues and I was just crying and alone. <laughs> and this was before cell phones were like mandatory for every person. So we had one cell phone between us and he had the cell phone and he was waiting for me at the um boat yard in this boat that he had actually borrowed from somebody we were going to spend the night on it was really sweet really romantic it's like a it's like a yacht boat yeah it yeah. was super cool but i was stuck on my fourth clo clue yeah. and exhausted and like totally alone and unable to like know what to do and how to meanwhile how i'm just like hanging out on the boat <laughs> just waiting and waiting for me waiting and waiting and i just couldn't get it figured out <laughs> How did, that, how did I end up to you? I think you just eventually I, told me to come to the boat. I, uh, yeah, I think so. I don't even remember because I remember. I think you, did I have the phone and you had to like, f like find a friend and be like, hey, I need to call Nathan. It was something <sighs> like that. I don't know you because know? I know I didn't have any way. You had to like find a friend, I think, to well, call me. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Because it was just impossible. And I, I think our brains just work so different. And we are so early in our marriage, we didn't realize how drastically different they right. really work. I'm not a riddle person. I'm not a riddle person. But here's the thing. When don't ever send me a riddle because I'm going to take it. I'm going to throw it away. I don't care no, about riddles. Here's the thing, though, is as we're reading Da Vinci Code, she's like really getting into the clues and like, oh, I bet you like she's really talking herself up like she's really good at. Clues no, I and never riddles. said that. No, you might have gotten that impression. Because you were so into the book. No, what I am good at is reading aloud, which is what I did. I assumed you enjoyed <laughs> the riddles. Anyways, so that was your best and worst. That was both. It was terrible. Okay, so my... And really sweet and wonderful at the same time. Right. A lot yeah. of time went into this. Days. My worst gift wasn't from you. Uh, it actually ended up when I was... So when I was a kid, I uh, found my... The presents... It was, it was Christmas. I found, found the presents. Like Ari found the presents this year? <laughs> that kind of found? Yeah, basically. Okay. So Ari... Our daughter. She did not find. She looked for. Um, to clarify what we're talking about. Um, yes, I found. Okay. Also looked for presents. And I saw <clears throat> that my parents had bought me the present that I had asked for. Mm. I was so excited. What was it? So excited. Uh, it was a Lego set. It was a particular Lego set. Okay. And so Christmas comes around, and, like, I open all my gifts, and I'm just, like, waiting for the one <laughs> that I'd asked for. <laughs> Ended up, apparently, so did my brother, and it was his present. Wah, wah. So I was deeply disappointed. Yeah, you were. Best you gift. You know what that teaches you not to do? Uh, Look at your presents. Hope. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, best gift from you was our third year of marriage, second year of marriage. We were going through a really, really, really difficult time, and we were, I specifically was wanting a video camera. We had, we were dirt broke, no money, living with my mom, and it, it, I, I wanted a video camera so bad because that, I was like hyper-focusing 
because our life was so terrible. I was hyper focusing on a video camera. And, and I mean, I it was so close to even being like eBay scammed through Western Union. Like, that's how desperate I was to get like a video Like the camera. Western Union guy talked him out of wiring money to the scam artist. Yep. hundred <laughs> percent. So, so, and you might say, where were you, Lacey? Believe me, I was there, but my voice was not heard. <laughs> so I was, we were, I was like so desperate. We were so broke. We were so hurting in our marriage and individually. And um, I remember we ended up moving back to Alaska at this point, And I kind of given up on the dream of a video camera. It was a very specific video camera, not like your cheap, you know, whatever consumer. And this was before everybody had video cameras that were super like the video camera on my phone is probably higher quality. Than no, it is. It's 100 percent. better. <laughs> yeah. It's 100 yeah. percent. Uh, so it wasn't it wasn't like three CCDs or something like this. Like yeah, that was the three, big thing you really three wanted. CCDs, yeah, yeah, that's what you were like. Kept telling me and about had, the three CCDs like was, that really stands out. To yeah, me. because you could like spl- it had split color. It wasn't like the colors were melted together. It had like crisp right, color. Right. And it c- it was even though it was three by four or four by three, I should say, um, which for those of you listening to this, you could just tune out if you have no interest in cameras right now. But it was a four by three, but it could do widescreen, Ooh, which yeah. was huge. It was a new thing. Yeah. I think it was so, on mini DVs, right? Because you popped DVs, a little yep, tape in there. Yep. Yeah. And so I had this video camera or I, I wanted this one video camera, but we could not afford it. So Lacey, we're in Alaska living with friends at this point because we needed counseling. So we actually moved up for counseling and i remember a uh, box came and it was this uh, it was expensive i mean it was like a thousand fifteen hundred fifteen hundred for it yeah i mean it was an expensive it's called a prosumer so it's not a professional camera it's not a consumer camera it's right in the middle sweet right, spot right so it was this like i i saw this camera and i immediately got it out of my brain because there's no way we could afford it well Lacey had bought it for me during one of the most miserable times in our marriage. And it was like today, the camera is essentially obsolete. It, but was, it was it was all of my money, all of my yeah. I'd been saving and squirreling for a really long time. And I kind of had it in an emergency fine. And um, I felt like I was supposed to buy him that camera. Yeah. So, so. It, it was like it that one, even though, like I said, and I, and I say my money because it was like all this tip. I think it was tip money. From yeah, it was, that I was t- working at yeah, the coffee shop. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, yeah, it was just a it was just one of those times in your life where basically a complete sacrifice um, for the time that we were in in our marriage. And I think because he was acting like such a psycho about this camera at the time that the fact that I stopped fighting it and kind of like. Gave in. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. So anyways, so that was, that's but, by But I far. mean, that's the camera we started our first, yeah. our first, like we have multi, but we started the media company with we did, yeah. that we had for a while. Yeah. Uh, you know, what's so funny is so we had this media company we started in 2008 and we had it and we ended it right before like commercials and videos became yeah. popular and accessible online right before there was a really big market for them. Yeah. It was just right before we could do anything substantial with it. This has happened multiple times. It really, in many different We start things. something and then we quit. And then all of a sudden that it, thing that we had started booms in other markets. And right. I'm like, I mean, we've done it multiple times, multiple times. Okay. Worst gift I've ever given you or gotten from you. Um, I can't think of one. Oh, that's good. That's unless happy. you ha- unless you can think of one where I was like less than thrilled to get it. You're pretty easy to shop for. Actually. I am. Yeah. I like gifts. I like I like gifts. It's nice. OK, the um, so that was best and worst. Ooh. so this next segment, I want to preface with a story. It, uh, we were living in Ireland. I love teaching. Uh, I've spent. I've spent decades perfecting decades. the craft. It has been. I know. It's just funny the way you say it. I love teaching. Like, I love being on stage. I feel more comfortable in a room of, like, 5,000 people on stage than, like, one-on-one. That's, that's, I... Have you been in a room of, sorry, I'm kind of picking on you, but... No, but I would imagine. 
the more people in the room that I'm on stage with, Sorry. the more I feel I'm comfortable. Just pick on you. No, no, but it, it's it's true. Like think about it. The more people there are in a room, here's it's. I, you feed off that energy. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. One on one though, I'm awkward. I don't like talk. Well, we've already talked about this. I'm horrible one on one. Um, you're not horrible one on one. It's the first impressions, and which you, you do have to, struggle in social settings. Like if we are invited a, to a party, I don't ever say, "Nathan, why don't you go hit this one alone?" Ever, I, never. That will never happen. Um, he, especially if if we actually have a role that we need to play no. at that party, not if we have a reputation to keep. <laughs> 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 if we want people to like us as a couple. <laughs> yeah, no. So anyway, so I we're in Ireland at this point in our marriage story, wherever we're at. Um, and I did, I get done with this one sermon and it was fantastic. I had researched the crap out of this topic and I had done history. I had like perfectly splice the greek verbs everything about this sermon and to be fair i have no idea what it was on you're making me um, yawn right now Sorry. <clears throat> exactly that's yeah. how good i was <laughs> 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 no so i get done i remember we go for a walk and i'm like babe man what would you think and what was your response why do i care <laughs> the response everyone hopes for <laughs> Why do you, why does this matter to me? Why does this matter, yeah. So we thought about this, <clears throat> and we've been talking about, you know, there's a lot of theological no, stuff. No, okay, so to defend myself, it wasn't like I was, you know, absentmindedly, you know, watching a show and just right. looked over and said that. It was genuine, like, yep. I, I get that you put all this time and energy to it. I get that these are important things, and they're interesting. Like, it's not that they're not interesting, but how? Or does this apply to my life? You know, what if I get up and leave this sermon? Right. How am I applying it to what's going on in my day to day life? I mean, if you're not doing that, then I don't feel like there's actually any value. Right. And that honestly, it was a conversation that revolutionized how I pursued um, public speaking again. And it, because it's like, if it doesn't matter, if all I'm giving is facts and figures and information, that's not going to change people's lives. It's the why. It's like, why is this important to me? That really changes people's lives. Like, how can, how will this affect me today? So we wanted to do a segment um, called Why Does It Matter? Where we talk about theological issues and uh, try to make them matter to you. Or no, why do I care? That's what it's called. Why do I care? And the first one. You're so excited to talk about this. I see it in your eyes right now. <laughs> no, what's our first one? Eschatological. No, right? eschatology. Eschatology. Yeah. Eschatological theology is what yeah. I was thinking. Eschatology. Why should I care? The study of Doesn't the times. word even make you just go, oh, unless, unless you are like Nathan and you get so excited. So jazzed. Yeah. <laughs> I love this stuff. No, but you're, you know what's funny is. But if the study of end times makes you immediately think of Kirk Cameron, then you're probably on the side of, why do I care? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it, it is funny. The longer you and I spend together, the more I'm becoming like you. Like, I get bored by subjects if they don't immediately apply to me. Well, and it's and, funny. Yeah. yeah. And it's it is interesting because I actually am somebody who loves to study. I, I, I love to study anything and everything. But I think when it comes to theological issues, especially ones that are heated yeah. and they cause a lot of debates, I get really irritated if they don't have any implications for our life or if the person, the people that are arguing about them are not actually thinking about why they are important rather right. than just why they're individually right, why their point is right. right. Because that, to me, that's boring. That, I, there was a time I remember, <laughs> um, it makes, this makes, I'll go back to it in a second, but it makes me remember that one night, I think we were, um, we were still really young and Nathan was in the throes of Bible school and he spent all night, I want to say until four in the morning, arguing with a friend. And they weren't even really arguing because they both agreed, but they were doing this devil's advocate thing back and forth about King even... James only. Oh, yes. And yeah. honestly, till four in the morning. And it was, to him, it was so fun. To me, <laughs> 
I don't have the words to describe how well, you much, obviously fell how asleep. little I cared. I was going to say, you, you obviously fell asleep. And the so. fact that I've remembered for this long how uninteresting that was. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so eschatology, why yes. do I care? Why does it matter to me? Um, do you have any thoughts before I get into my soliloquy? Um, because we we have been having this conversation. And yeah, I, don't wanna... I think I think what I want to say is I I do. So in the book of Revelation, it says that um, it is a, it is a book in the Bible that comes with a blessing. It says mm-hmm. that if you study this, you'll be blessed. So I do believe there is a lot of value in studying end time issues. I think mm-hmm. that there is a reason why it's in the Bible, and I don't think it should be disregarded. So if you heard that from this exchange, that's not my intent. Right. I do believe there's blessing in it, and and it is a valuable thing to study. So um, why is it something coming out now? Um, I think in certain circles, there's been a lot of talk yep. about end times and where we're at and what it means and all of that. And so I, this is why we're bringing the conversation up and why do I care? Because Mm -hmm. I think you can have a few responses. One is you sink into your understanding of the theology of end times and you kind of write it out or you disregard it entirely and just, um, dismiss the person as being overreactive. You know, there's, there's, there's very, usually there's pretty polarized responses to end times theology right so um as nathan and i've been talking you've been hearing more people with everything going on discussing end times we just thought it would be valuable to talk about why it does matter and why we do care right and i don't want to get into the teaching we do have a teaching available if you want to hear it It it's very good very good teaching but why eschatology matters and i'm just going to say this and you can kind of chime in if you have any additional thoughts is our view of how things are going to wrap up, whether, you know, we're going to hell in a handbasket or things are going to get worse and then all of a sudden Jesus is going to come back and save the day after death and destruction. Um, You're currently buying supplies and burying them in a connex in your backyard. Hypothetically. Right. (laughs) Um, Totally. I don't know anyone that's ever done that. Not at all, ever. (laughs) Um, Or like just the, you know... So there's that, the fear base, like I'm going to machine gun everyone who's going to try to steal my food. Right. Um, Got to protect my family. Or the other side of that is, you know what? It doesn't matter. Jesus is coming back anyways. We'll see. Whatever will be, will be. So both of those, Mm -hmm. um, just in general, are not, uh, as, as Christians, as people who love Jesus, follow Jesus, are filled with the spirit. That is not our behavior. Number one, we're not called to be full of fear. Um, in fact, we're supposed to have, you know, he did not give us a spirit of fear, but of love and sound mind. Is that right? Power, love, and a sound mind. Power, love, and a sound mind. Um, so we're not supposed to be living in fear. And then two is we're not supposed to be, you know, say la vie, like, hey, what happens is, you know, happens. We're very much in a partnership with God and spreading his kingdom. And so our view of end times or our view of maybe how we should participate in end times in spreading mm-hmm. the kingdom is very valuable and will impact your day to day. It'll impact how you parent. It'll impact how you have relationship with others. Correct. Um, and so <clears throat> this view of end times, eschatology, you know, <laughs> you could you could dig down into Revelation and, and Ezekiel and all of the verses. But the overarching view of scripture is we are to carry his kingdom. We are to spread his kingdom. We're to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And we're you know, in the end, Jesus does win. Um, But our view of that, our participation in that is very valuable. And that's why, to me, the study of eschatology is really important. So how do you just, you know, spitball in here, how should somebody approach the study of eschatology if Mm -hmm. they haven't done it before what what should that look like that's a great question and you know if you go to our website (laughs) (laughs) you know honestly like the first place to start is genesis what's god's mission what was god's first command is to be fruitful and multiply and so start the your study there what is god's intent for the world what is his intent for the world 
And um, how, you know, even from the beginning, Genesis 1, what is our responsibility as humans? And you carry that thread all the way through. Um, I do. Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I do seriously, though, recommend the study that we we have posted. Which you just posted that, um, I want to say, end of November? Yeah, it would have been end of November. So it is on our, if you guys want to go back in the uh, podcast audio and scroll back a few months, um, I think it'd be, yeah, end of November. Um, It's called uh, The End Times and why you want to be left behind. That's what it's called. <laughs> so I think um, as you, if you are delving into the study of eschatology and you are trying on different, um, I guess, theologies there, because <laughs> there's quite a few. <laughs> one of the questions to ask yourself is what fruit is this producing in my life? If it's producing fear, mm-hmm. if it's producing um being shut down or even violent uh, thoughts about what you would do or how you would act that would be different than you'd act to somebody here right Right. now. I think that's a reason to question if that's really God's heart for you, because, you know, one of the things I've always thought is if the Lord's calling me to act to other people in a certain way now, even if things got real bad, why would it change? Why would that way that I'm supposed to be, walking with the spirit and led by the spirit changed, even if the situation got worse, because that is the thing is if we're not walking in our flesh, if we're not walking by our own um, authority, Mm -hmm. then we should be able to have that desire to do that now, not only when things get bad or when things get more necessary to do that. And I think that there is a, a, a simple way to check you know, if the study that you're doing, the the things you're delving into, um, the fruit that is producing your life to those, uh, to your, the people that love you, is it something that is valuable and enriching your your walk with the Lord? And I think yeah. that's a good question to ask. Yeah. And is it bringing life to people? Right. Or is it bringing fear or mm-hmm. apathy? Right. You know, kind of the, the spectrum there, if you will. Right. So that's great. Because yeah. at, at the end of the day, I mean, since the beginning of time, I mean, Christ was crucified before the beginning of time. You know what I mean? He mm-hmm. has won. He he has given, he has authority and he has mm-hmm. given us authority. And so we are to walk in a position of victory. Yep. And I think that um, that's that's my heart for end times. Um, yep. And like I said, we have yeah. a full teaching on it. Um, Correct. Don't, you can't like give it away. It's like we got to promote it so they can... <laughs> click back. <laughs> no, I understand. I think you're asking why it matters yeah. to me. And yeah. I think just you can fall. I've seen a lot of people I love actually fall into depression or yeah. uh, taking things on carrying heavy loads. They're not meant to carry because yeah. of the end times excuse. Yeah. Yeah. And that that's great. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I was going to say um, it. Yeah. Don't, it's not because I mean, if we're not supposed to prepare for ourselves now, if we're supposed right. to look at the birds of the air and the flowers of the field now, why would that change? change. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, it's like, oh, when that comes, we're not allowed to trust God anymore. Exactly. I have to. I have to fight. I have to. Um, be. Or I'm not allowed to trust God anymore because you know what? What happens happens. Right. You know, I have no responsibility right. in this. So, um, yeah, really good, really good. So, Ultimately, we win. The very optimistic in, oh, that's what I was going to say is, you know, scripture is very clear about not necessarily looking to your surroundings and circumstances, but looking to him. And I think oftentimes what happens is we look around us and build our theology off of that rather than is there more happening right now behind the scenes? What is God doing behind the scenes rather than building a theology of fear and all that? um, Just trusting him, resting in him. I think we're done. I, I think so. We've we've covered all the show notes. We yeah. I don't have anything else. I did have um, one fun note. To, I went to I meant to bring it back up at the. Um, we were talking about gifts. Oh yeah. I just saw a gift guide, and on it, it was a book with about how to um, make crafts with your cat with your cat. And it's a book about how to use cat hair to make like felted like hats and pictures and little like little creations with cat hair. So 
I thought that would be in a really original like if, gift. No, that, for, you, that means your cat's with you and you're pulling its hair out. Well, there is like a whole chapter about how to be humane, about how you harvest the <laughs> Hold on. Hair. Hold on. I want to, I want to, what is in the realm of like, what if, what if there's a, hey, you know what? You could do crafts with your friend's hair and here's how you humanely harvest their hair. Yeah. But you know, what's funny is, you know, that is legit because I was once at a little boutique shop and there was um, like scarves and different things that were made with dog hair. So there is subgroups that do this guys i'm gonna uh, <laughs> i'm gonna close it down right here because i feel like we're gonna be entering the realm of me saying words that children you can find this book on amazon if you have somebody you love in your life right now that you feel would uh, benefit from it also so. if there's someone you hate in your life <laughs> it also makes the good gift for them too guys thank you so much for listening yeah. we really appreciate it and um man join us uh again Subscribe to mm -hmm. wherever you found this and um, stay tuned for more episodes. Tuned. Stay tuned. tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> okay. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>